Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, and today I am so excited because I have the guest that I have been dreaming about getting on this podcast for everyone out there, and it's Mike Warren, an internationally known business maverick, wealth coach, and investor. And if for those of you who are fans of uh, Anchorman uh, with Will Ferrell, uh, this will be my, my Anchorman voice. He's kind of a big deal. So Mike's a big deal. He holds a double MBA He's a pres- he's the president of a diversified consulting firm. Uh, he is uh, the America's premier bad debt financial strategist, and uh, he's been doing this for 20 years. He is the expert among experts, and I am thrilled, pleased, honored. Mike Warren, how are you? I'm great, Mark. Thank you. That was really nice, and uh, I really like that little part where you know he's the real deal. Yeah. I think that's a big deal. I like that. That was kind of good. Yeah. Subtle, but really good. Yeah, yeah. So, Mike, I was telling you that I have a program, Art of the Land Flip, and I think my program's great for people that want to learn how to buy and sell land and flip it for cash online. But your niche is even more interesting to me because it's flipping businesses. And that is just fascinating. Usually when I think of flipping businesses, and back in the day, uh, I was a business broker, which I hated and couldn't be more happy to be uh, transitioned into real estate back in 2001. But this is really intriguing because to not be a broker, to be a principal in learning how to buy and sell and flip a company, that just equates to it's a big dollars for me. Can you, can you kind of explain to me the process of buying a company and okay. using its own cash? Sure. Well, you know, uh, let me try to make it uh, a little bit more uh, relatable, I think, for a lot of people. When, when you hear about buying a company, they, they start thinking about millions or at least hundreds of thousands of dollars or maybe even buying a franchise like McDonald's or a Subway or a Taco Bell or something like that. And, and I'm not really talking about uh, big, huge, $20, $30 million companies. I'm talking about companies where you know, they're doing probably gross revenue somewhere between, let's say, $1 and $5 million. That's a nice sweet spot. Okay. What I like to do is I, I'll go into a company like that. I'll end up buying the company using the assets of the company itself to buy it so I have no money out of my pocket to buy it. And literally from the day that I buy it, I'm typically getting a six-figure salary from the day that I buy it when I use none of my own cash in order to buy it. So uh, that, that's, that's just what people like, wow. Wait, what did he just say? Yeah. L- let me compare it to you or, or uh, size it up for you a slightly different way. Let's compare this to buying a house. Okay. A lot of people hear, oh, well, yeah, you can buy real estate. Well, a lot of people also know that you can buy real estate no money down. Well, the difference when I buy real estate, no money down, and and anybody that's out there that's listening right now can certainly buy real estate, no money down. The difference between buying real estate, no money down, and buying a business, no money down, it's about uh, six zeros. That's the difference. Uh, (laughs) uh, You know, actually, I'm I'm trying to find something here. Let me see. I'll find this real quick. And there we go. So I was going to pull up. uh, I can't show it here, but I was going to do a slide for you. And kind of talk about it. So let, let's kind of go through some numbers. Can I go actually go break down some numbers for people? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Okay, so let's say that we found, find a house that we want to buy. And okay. let's say that house has a purchase price of $100,000. Or, you know, you, you can liken this to buying land, just like you do, Mark. So land, house, business, pretty much the same thing. The same strategies, the same thought process go into this, this part of the business. The difference is how much profit you make and how much work you got to do. So go back, going back to the house, we buy a house, it's $100,000, and let's say they require a down payment of either $10,000 or if you're really good and you know how to buy houses with no money down, well, you can buy it no money down. So now you bought this house no money down, let's say you turn around and you rent out that property. 
Well, if you rent out the property, let's say you get $200 a month in rental income, which is a decent income for a single family residence. Right. So you're getting $200 a month. And let's say that down the road, three years down the road, you sell that business for 100 or excuse me, you sell that house for $130,000. Now, we're not going to take out any taxes. We're not going to take out any commissions or anything like that. So our numbers will work nice and easy. So what happens is you sold the property for $130,000, which is $30,000 more than what you bought it for. So you made a decent profit. But you also rented it for three years or 12, 12 months, right? right. Uh, you got three years times 12 months uh, at $200 a month. So you made $7,200 in positive cash flow out of that. So you take your $30,000 profit on the, the increased value of the house plus your $7,200 in cash flow, you made $37,200. For most people, that's a home run. They're really happy with that. Yeah, yeah, and an infinite ROI. Yeah, it's a it's great deal. So right. let's take a look at buying a business. So I go in, I look for a business, typically around a million dollars or so. So I'll buy a million dollar business. I'll buy it with no money down. Most of the businesses I buy, well, actually every business I buy is doing a positive cash flow, making money. A lot of them are making about 30% profit uh, in their business, which means that in this case, you broke that down. That's about $25,000 a month in positive cash flow. And let's say that what I like to do is I go in and I'll typically triple the value of that business in about three years, which is when I would normally sell it. So let's say that I triple that, that business size. So in three years, it goes from 1 million to 3 million. My cash flow at $25,000 a month times 12 months times three years is $900,000 in cash flow. So if we add in the difference between what I bought it for, I bought it for a million, sold it for three, so I have a $2 million profit, plus my $900,000 in cash flow means I, I made $2.9 million, or I made $2,600,000 more than what you did buying and selling and renting that house. The, the, those numbers are making my head spin. That's it's it. That, that, I mean, <laughs> that's... <laughs> But see, here, here's the thing, right? I mean, people go, holy cow, well, that sounds really good. But, well, you know, there is really no but. It's a matter of leveraging the assets of the company itself to buy the company just like you leverage a house. How do you leverage a house? You get owner financing. You could uh, go borrow against the real estate itself. So if it's a house that has a little bit of equity, you can borrow against the property. Uh, maybe it has... If it's a commercial property, uh, you know, an apartment building or something like that, you can go against the rental income. You can go against laundry facilities, parking facilities. There's lots of ways to leverage the assets when you buy real estate. Well, the exact same thing happens when we go in to buy a business. We leverage the business, such as accounts receivable, uh, accounts payable. We change vendors. Uh, we have we might have equipment that we could borrow against. We have merchant accounts we can borrow. Right, lots of different ways that we can come up with the cash. And, and the, the important thing here, I think, Mark, for everybody to understand is this is not your cash. This is not our listeners' cash. This is not my cash. Right. It's cash that there might be cash that's required to buy the business, but it's just not our cash. Just like it's not your cash to go buy a house, it's somebody else's cash, but you still went in and you bought it, no money down. We do the same thing on a business. Now, am I taking on debt to do this? Uh, you might be. And some people say, well, when you buy a house, no money down, are you taking on debt? Yes, of course. Yeah. Well, same thing with the business, but that's okay. So long as you make more than enough money in your house in order to cover whatever the debt is and give you a positive cash flow. In that case, in the example I gave you, we were renting it out at a $200 a month positive cash flow. Well, right. if I buy a business, which is already profitable. Now, here's the key thing. If you think about this, Mark, right? So I buy a business, it's already making money. It's not a startup. Most startups fail. Well, if I'm buying a business that's already doing over a million dollars a year in business, do they already have a lot of the basics in place? Right. They've got infrastructure. They've, they've got the most important thing. They've got customers. They've got They're management. Making, right? That's right. It may not be perfect. It may need to be fixed. It could probably be grown uh, a whole lot, uh, but they've already got it all there. So I'm not struggling to try to figure out, oh, how do I – make this happen. No, it's already there. I'm just essentially taking it to the next level because typically the owner's skill set of growing that business from zero to a million dollars, they've typically maxed out on their skill set. They don't know how to take a company from one million to five million, which is a totally different mindset. Right, right. But, you know, to play devil's advocate, you've got a double MBA. I mean, for all I know, you could be a quant and looking at these cash flow pro formas and you can see things like like Warren Buffett 
and and do some kind of financial engineering, and you might look at a million dollar business, and I look at it in one lens, and you look at another lens, and you see all these hidden assets and ways to grow the business. I mean, how can someone like myself, you know, do this? Can anyone really do this? Or sure. Do... Okay. Anybody can. In, in fact, you know what? Let me give you an example. So this is a deal I, I just bought. So I just bought a, a, a vitamin company. Okay. And, and what's interesting about the vitamin company, though, is that it didn't require any of my own cash. And in fact, I got 51% equity ownership in the company and they're paying me $2,000 a month to take it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? That's so that sounds it. like an amazing deal. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like cash back at closing when you buy a house. Right? You get right. cash back at closing. Well, I get cash back when I buy a business. It, anybody can do it. It's just if, if you can understand the basics of real estate, you can understand how to buy and flip businesses. It's really not hard. Um, and anybody can do it. Do, yeah, I've got a couple MBAs, but you know what? Realistically, Mark, I don't use them because what I do is I don't have to know every aspect of buying a business or, in fact, running a business. And uh, let me give you a couple other companies I'm working on, right? So I'm working on a, uh, a radiology company. I'm working on a medical supply company. I'm working on a trucking company. So these are all different companies in different industries. Right. right. Now, you're, now you're based in – in uh, Colorado I'm Springs, Colorado, right? In Colorado. But so, I'm, are all these companies local, or are they? No, they're all different states. They're all different states. Yep, okay. I have some in Canada too. Um, we're working on a couple in the UK. The process is pretty much the same in all these different countries. The only thing that changes from country to country and state to state is your basic paperwork and your legal disclaimers and stuff like that. How you write up the documents. Of which case, you know what? That's what I use a lawyer for. Right. I pay them hourly. And oh, well, let me let me say it this way. The company that I'm buying pays the lawyer hourly right. to do the paper. Right. So it still doesn't come out of my pocket. That, that, I just figured that, out how to do it. You, you know, you you as a uh, as a business valuation and expert uh, back in the day, you looked at all these companies for a mergers and acquisition firm. Right. And you're right. looking at it and say, gosh, we're, you know, we want to do this. You want to put in your own money, take it over, do this and maybe take a public or uh, sell it to uh, a Wall Street company and, you know, sell it at 12 to 15 multiple, whatever it is. Well, I'm down in, a layer, in an area where the mergers and acquisition folks, they can't operate because it's not cost effective for them to do that. Right. So you, you right. look at your home runs. I'm willing to look at other deals that I'm not saying they're dogs, but I'm looking at deals that. Other people won't touch, and I know how to grow them because it's just basic marketing. The people, because they're so busy working in the business, they don't have time to work on the business. I'm sure you've heard that phrase. Yeah, I mean, and I say it all the time, actually. Um, th this is really, really intriguing. So anyone can do this. How fast can it get done? I mean, from you know, from sourcing the deal – from doing your due diligence on that company, making sure that it's it's in within, I guess you have a template that you look at, just like if I were going to look at a, a piece of land um, and have to have a certain characteristics that would make me say, okay, this I uh, would actually close on that on that property. I mean, how fast can this be done? And I mean, typically w when I was doing it, it would take them a year of due diligence. It'd be a hundred thousand dollars of uh, you know, hiring a big six firm to go in, do the audit on the books, and it was a very long process. If they had a dip in the numbers, they'd hold off, um, you know, for that quarter. So how, how fast can someone, you know, analyze a business and then close on it? Well, if you look at uh, – those are all great questions, and right. I think you bring up some very valid concerns, and this is why we're able to do things a lot differently than the larger boys. Right. Um, so let, let's look at it from two angles. If I were to go in and buy a business, first off, I don't want to buy the business and own it outright because then I have to run it. Right, okay. I may not know anything about running the business and I don't want to run it because now I'm working in a business. I'm not working on it. I like to look at it from this standpoint. I want to have 15 or 20 companies that I own at any given time. And if I have that many, how can I operate any one of them? I can't work in them. I have to work on them, meaning I have to act as a true CEO, right? Right. So what? who is best 
uh, let me ask you this question then. So who would you think would be best qualified to run that company that I might be interested in buying at least part of? The current owner. Exactly. So what I do in all the companies I buy is I keep the owners involved in the business. They run it. Um, they, now, I talked about, you know, they, they don't have a certain skill set. Well, they run it while I bring in new staff, new operations people or new CEO or new marketing person or whoever it is to come in that gets trained by the owner to run that on a day-to-day -day basis. And then the owner eventually elevates to what's called the chairman level for their company and pulls away further and further. And so li literally in a span of about, well, my, my time period is I want to be in and out of a company in three years. So from the day that I buy it to having sold it, I'm looking at 36 months, I'm out of, out of a property. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll grow it and I'll have a new operations person who comes in, replaces the existing owner, not me, because I'm not skilled at running that company. I'm good at knowing where to find people who are, because right. I can always find the right skill set. Um, I get them to come in, run the company, grow it. Now it becomes an even more sellable asset because it's totally a hands-off business. They're, the next owner now doesn't have to worry about running it day to day because somebody else is already doing it for them. It's purely a cash cow. Yeah, so that, I, I, I'm loving this model because if I'm looking at it from the sense of you come to me, I own this company that I've been working for 20 years. I'm tired. Um, I'm not growing it. I've been at a million dollars of revenues for three years now. And you come in and you say, look, Mark, you're going to get two bites of the apple. You can get you know, you can get 50% cash now. We're going to leverage your existing assets. But then I'm going to grow it in the next three years to $3 million, and you'll get another bite of the apple when we sell it. Is that correct? That's pretty much it, yeah. Now, just for clarification points, um, I actually grow it. We'll typically triple the profit in about 8 to 12, maybe 14 months, and then we'll do it again. Um, and so we actually grow it really fast. So the, the first 24 months are all about that super growth. And then months 24 to 36 are all about the sale. Okay. So while months 24 to 36, we're still growing it, but it's really about packaging it together. And it's so really from day one, we're setting it up to sell or flip that business to somebody else for a much, much higher multiple than what we bought it for. So, you know, when I'm buying a, a company that I'm going in, and it's doing a million dollars, and I triple it, and it goes to three million. We're we're making a sizable chunk of cash. And if you think about it, if I'm not running the company and I put none of my own cash into the deal, and somebody else runs it day to day, I'm still receiving part of that twenty five thousand dollar month cash flow in the example I gave you. So I'm getting money every month, um, and I get the big payday down the road. So I get cash every month, just like you do in rental property. Right. But I get that huge equity kicker at the end, uh, which is a seven-figure payday. It's fantastic. And it can be higher than that. It could be up to an eight-figure payday. It just depends on how big a business that you have and how fast you grow and how big you get. Wow. So what kind of support do you offer if I wanted to flip businesses on my own? Well, I mean, the only support that, you mean that I would offer to you, Mark, you mean as an example? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I know that, um, you teach people how to do this. I do. And I'm interested in learning. So, I mean, it just seems so complex. Is this something that you support or? Oh, no, I support it. L let, me, let me put it to you this way. Would you like to be able to, well, if I showed you how to find these deals and negotiate and stuff like that, and then allow you to work with my team and bring a deal in, we take a small piece of equity in your deal. You keep the majority. Would you like to partner with me on doing deals so that we ride, ride it out together? Absolutely. That's a no-brainer. That's how I support you. Oh, I get it. Okay. That's fantastic. Right? Because, I mean, if you look at it, well, what's in it for Mike? Well, Mike's looking at the big payday down the road. I'm not looking at how much money am I going to make from a little bit of cash flow? Even if it's now 25,000, don't, don't get me wrong. It's, it's a lot of cash flow, right? Right. But even if I was making a five or $10,000 a month, I'm not looking at getting a paycheck like that. What I'm looking at is how do I get a seven figure payday about three years down the road? That's what I want. That, and that makes so much sense to me. And if, and if I was going to do this, yeah, of course I'd want to partner with you. Um, it, it completely mitigates so much of the risk. So Mike, it mitigates my risk, but how do you mitigate your own risk? I mean, clearly 
there's a large population out there that would have tremendous interest in learning how to do this. You can't possibly partner with everybody, correct? You're absolutely correct. I mean, what I really look for, you know, for people that I want to partner with, I really call them more of an apprentice than anything else. And, you know, I, everybody says they want to do it, but very few people will actually stand up and do what they need to do to make it happen. So what I found the easiest thing for me to do is I just get everybody that says they want to do it. I put them in a room and I train them for a couple of days. I say, here's how to do it. And then I wait to see which ones really do want to perform and want to partner. So, you know, if you actually found a deal after I showed you all the right ways of going about it and you wanted me to partner at that point, yeah, then I'd be very interested with it. But you got to get the basic training uh, of how to do all this stuff first. It's not complicated. It's just like buying a house. You know, if you go buy a house, uh, and you've never done it before, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So you put around you teams uh, or, or people who are part of your team who know how to do each aspect of the business. You just go in and do the part that you, you're good at, whatever part that may be. Uh, but you still make the lion's share of the money because you're the one that found the deal and put it together. That Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Sure, sure. So what kinds of businesses are you looking for? Manufacturing, services, um, everything. everything. Uh, I, I want cash flowing businesses. You know, my sweet spot, you know, and I, I encourage. So, let, Mark, let's just use you as an example. Right. So if you were going to start out and you say, well, Mike, where should I look at? You know, what business should I look at? And what I would recommend for you, Mark, would, would be find an industry that you think that you might like to own a business in once you figure out what that industry is, because it doesn't matter what industry you're in. So long as it's making a profit, um, don't go look look for a company that's sick or in bankruptcy. You know those are great plays. You can make a lot of money with those companies, but in your very first few deals, that's not what you should be doing. Right. You can make a lot more money by finding a company that's already doing well right now, and you go in there, you get equity in the company, no cash out of your pocket, you get a, a nice salary out of the whole thing, and you grow the company, you get a payday. But it doesn't require full time effort. So, what I'd really encourage you to do is look at more of an industry that you think might be interesting, and then look at what the numbers are, okay. uh, and does it have room for growth? Because if it's already if it's a business that's doing let's say one hundred fifty thousand or two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand dollars a year in gross revenue, well, they're probably operating on a shoestring budget. That means they don't really have the resources or the staffing in place to have or, or handle additional sales and marketing, um, websites, you know, trade shows, whatever it is that they may need to do in order to generate those additional sales, they don't have the systems in place to handle it. A company that's doing a million probably has a little bit more resources, not as not well, they'll have more than a smaller one. They don't have as much as they could have, but um, you know, that's where you come in ha having a team around you that knows how to grow that company. Yeah, and yeah, I mean that makes a lot of sense. And what I like about this niche for you, or for someone that is interested in the program, is that you've you've got a, a seller who has limited options. I mean, if I'm doing a million in revenue and I'm doing three hundred thousand in free cash flow, and I want to get let's say a four multiple, I want one point two million for my business. There's not many people out there that can just throw one point two million dollars in cash at that company and say, you know, buy Mr. Jones, thanks for doing this, this company and, and kick them out. Right. I mean, right. they're, they're motivated to see you succeed because they're probably, you know, they're partnering with you. Correct. That is exactly right. My tagline is, would you like to get a smaller piece of a bigger payday down the road? That's what I sell to the owner or say to the owners. And once they understand, for instance, Let's go to the example that I gave you, right? A million dollar business doing three hundred thousand dollars a year in net profit. Right. I'm probably going to buy that company somewhere between uh, three hundred thousand and six hundred thousand dollars. So one to three times its net is what I would probably buy it for. Okay. But if I grow it to three million, and it's now making nine hundred thousand dollars a year in net profit, right? Figure just to tri triple the numbers. Okay. It's doing nine hundred. I'm going to sell that thing for nine hundred to two point seven million. Right. That's what I'm going to sell it for, all cash. Um, but I, I'll probably actually sell it for more than that because it's on this dramatic growth uptick, uh, and it makes it easier to sell as a company because it has really solid financials now. Most owners in small companies, they, they're running the company as their own private piggy bank. 
So they write everything off through the business. And, and don't get me wrong, I do that too in a couple of my companies. That's what you're supposed to do. Right. But when you're trying to set a company up for sale, that is not what you do. You have to do it a different way. So we go in, we clean up the books. Not to say there's anything wrong with the books. It's just that we have to make the company more sellable and more valuable. Sure, sure. Because you it's your... done some multiple. It's not just a dollar for dollar exchange. Right, right. I mean, when you're doing your due diligence, which which do you really think is more important? Is it the business, the cash flow, the management structure, or is it, or do you say, look, I'm going to vet this current owner because I really like this guy. He's just tired, but with the right injection of of marketing and talent, this is the guy that's that can help because he's done it for so long. Take this company from a million to three million. Is it, is or is it a combination thereof? I mean, what what do you really look at? It's really a combination, okay. and it depends on what industry it's in, who their market is, meaning who their buyers are, and what can we do to get more awareness in the market. Is it a local-only uh, business, or can it go statewide or national-wide, or could it even go international? So you have to look at how, how do you plan to grow that business. And it, if you're planning to go, let's say, national, well, who has the skill set to do it? If the owner had the skill set, he would have already done. Or maybe he's dabbled in it a little bit, but he hasn't been successful because he's guessing. He's just throwing a little bit of money here and there. It's, nothing's really working because he doesn't have a plan. He doesn't have any systems in place. So what we've got to get is a different management team in place that knows how, how to do that. So people that I bring in have already done that. Okay, that so makes sense. they can step in and it's a very clear plan. The owner looks at it and says, okay, this is my baby, but obviously I'm selling my baby. So how can I get the, the largest return? If, if we go back to the example earlier, if I said, well, if the owner sells that company to me, that he's doing $300,000 a year in net, and he sells it to me at one time at his net or $300,000. And then we go to, we, we grow that company at $900,000 a year net, and we sell that now for two point seven. Well, let's say that we both split it 50-50. If, if he sold it to me in the beginning, he'd get $300,000. Right. If, however, he waited and we round the number from 2.7 to 3 million, just round it off, and we, he waits three years to do it, he would now get one and a half million versus a 300,000. Which one do you think most owners want to take? Yeah, absolutely. They want yeah, they'll, they'll wait, they'll defer that retirement or that whatever they want to do for a little bit of time uh, to get the bigger payday. Sure, sure. Like, uh, like golden handcuffs, if you will, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. I, I like to refer to them as platinum handcuffs, but yes, golden <laughs> works as well too. Exactly, platinum handcuffs. Yes. So, how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been doing model? it since the nineties. Since the nineties. Okay. Yep. I've done real estate. Uh, you know, I'm a big real estate investor. Also, I've done real estate. Started, got my first house when I in 1985. But um, you know, then I started. I went to grad school. I've always wanted to do businesses. I've always started a lot of businesses, and then looked at, well, gosh, you know. I could keep, continue to start all these different businesses um, and put in my own money, my own talent, try to figure out from scratch. And, you know, the benefit there is it doesn't require a lot of capital, uh, at least when you're starting out, at least sometimes. And then I looked at, well, gosh, if I buy a business that's already running, already has the capital, has some of the staffing in place, some of the infrastructure, you may have to have some turnover there. But most things are already there. Gosh, that seems like a much better play to me than trying to start it from scratch. And oh, do all that work myself. Oh, Most absolutely. people just start a business because they think, oh, I don't have enough money to go buy a business, so I have to start it myself. And right, it's just right. like they're buying themselves a job is what they're doing. Right. That's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, I, I see that all the time. And uh, it's it's distressing, actually, to, to see people, you know, spin their wheels. Um, you know, they're, they're working 40 hours a week. Now they're working 80 hours a week. And – and taking on all this risk and actually making sometimes less money than they were working a job just so they could say, Hey, I don't have a boss anymore. Well, right. you still have a boss. Your customers are your boss, but you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they think they're calling their own hours. Yeah. They're calling their own hours where they're working at six in the morning. They work, at, you know, they go home, have dinner, put the kids to bed and they work some more. Right. Right. So it's working hard, not smart where this method is working really smart leveraging your time and and someone else's you know time and and really getting that 
that nice cash flow, and then uh, as well as the uh, the big payday down sure. the road, um, I think a lot of people are going to be, you know, very interested in learning more about this. So, how many apprentices are you looking for, and how can my students go out and learn more? Because I I do preach a lot about having a plan B. We had Joan Joanne Musa on a couple of weeks ago and talking about tax lien investing. I don't do tax lien investing. I don't do business flipping, but you know, I am a big believer in, in the name of the podcast is working smart, not working hard, earn more, work less, learn how. And, and Mike, I can't thank you enough for, uh, you know, taking the time to, to talk about this. So, um, again, how many apprentices are you looking for and, and how can I learn more? Well, ultimately, I'm only looking maybe for 10 or 15 apprentices. Okay. But again, I don't know which one will turn out to be a real apprentice or not. Uh, because it's really a longer-term partnership thing that I'm looking to find with people. So I have to probably put you know, 50, 60, or 100 people in at any given time to figure out, okay, which couple are going to you know, work their way to the top and say, okay, yeah, I'm actually willing to do this. I'm not just, you know, buying a book or I'm going to attend a seminar and they go home and say, wow, that was really great and go back to doing what I always did before and expect a different result. You know, I want somebody that says, wow, I'm going to do this. It actually works uh, because it does work and it, it can be life changing, not only for the people who do it, but for their families and their friends and everybody else. It changes the, the whole dynamic, the whole, whole uh, legacy factor of what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, I teach my kids how to how to buy a business. My, my daughter's boyfriend, in fact, wants to learn how to buy a business because he, he's seeing that I'm buying them with none of my own money. In fact, most of the time, they pay me to buy them. Right, right. You know, it's tremendous. It's so tremendous. yeah, I, I I open it up periodically. I don't do it all the time, uh, but when I do, then I'm looking to see just you know who's going to rise away to the top, and you know I'll give everybody the same training. It's really a matter of who takes action. Because action is not something you say, it's something you do. Right. You know, and who, who steps up and, and proves that they, they're willing to take action? Great. Those are the people I want to partner with. Sure, sure. And, and when I train, uh, I have like a VA program to teach people how to hire VAs. Mm -hmm. And I always say, hire three, keep one. Yes. Give, give all three the same project. But you'll see out of those three, one is going to stand out and, uh, you know, really uh, put what I like to call uh, – you know, emotional uh, energy into it. So they're not just going to follow directions. They're going to think for themselves and make it better than what you actually even wanted. So that's probably the ideal apprentice that you're looking for as well, I would think. I, I would say, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, that's why I'll do, you know, like a, a couple of day training, put people in, you know, everybody in the room. Everybody's really excited, but it's, you know, it's what happens after you get the training. What do you do with that? And those are the people that I want to work with. Right, right. So let's talk about the training um, and the room. Where is that training and when? Um, well, my next one is actually July 27th and 28th in, La in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, I know it's hot in Las Vegas, but we'll be in a hotel room. It'll be air conditioned. So it'll be just fine. Right, right. Yeah, um, I mean, I I'm I'm sitting here in Scottsdale. I think it's like 109 today. So Yikes. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's not hot. That's, it's a dry heat, Mike. So, yeah, yeah, sure. I've heard that lots of time. I, I just know that when I go outside, I start sweating really bad. So that's hot. <laughs> right, right. All right. So I'm an A player. I'm a big hitter. I know I can do this, but I live in New York and I can't come to the live event in Vegas. Uh, what do I do? Well, I could always get you videos of the event. That's your worst case scenario. Um, I really don't like it that way because he, he, there, there's so many things that go on. For instance, um, you know, I have a few people that are going to be bringing deals to the event uh, to participate in what I call my snake pit. My snake pit is where people that have found deals prior to the event get to pitch it to my panel to see. It's kind of like Shark Tank. Oh, I love so Shark Tank. It's done a little bit differently, though. So they get to pitch it to us to see which one of us is willing to take the least amount of equity to partner with them to go buy these deals. Oh, that's fantastic. And so it's a twist on, on a generic idea. Uh, okay. And that works out really well. So that's, that's going to be pretty popular. So they'd miss out on stuff like that. Plus the networking, meeting the teams, uh, you know, sharing information, figuring out who can be part of your team. 
because the people at the event are people that you want to get to know because they're all going to be players just like you. Yeah, that's that's great. I mean, uh, have you opened this up yet or is it, it – I mean, how tough uh, is it going to be to get a ticket? Um, I opened it up and it's open until probably about the week before uh, the 27th of July. So uh, then I'll have to close it back down. Okay. Okay. So if people want to go, can I give them the website where they can go? Or yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so if they want to go to that, they need to visit the website at flippingbusinesses.com. So it's flipping businesses. So there's a, a bunch of S's in there. So flippingbusinesses.com. And it'll have uh, information about what's going to be covered there. And you'll see that there's just a boatload of stuff that's covered. So, you know, using your example, somebody's in New York and can't go. What they have to ask themselves is really how important is it for them to be able to have a multi million dollar business that pays them six figures every year anyway without them operating anything? Is that worth two days out of their life and changing their schedule? Yeah, exactly. That, you know, that and seems if it's like not, a no brainer. Then it's probably not the person I'm probably going to be doing an apprentice program with, honestly. No, you know, that, they can yeah. still get the training. I'll give them the videos, but you know, it's not the same thing. Right, right. Exactly. I mean, there's there's so much that goes on at a live event that it's 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 apples and oranges, completely different. Yep. So, any last minute thoughts for folks who want to learn how to flip a business? Um, you know, one of the things that I would uh, just try to tell everybody to think about is there's a lot of businesses that are out there. There's a lot of actually, in fact, what I found is that almost every business owner wants to sell their company. They just don't know how, and they don't know how much it's worth. They don't know how to do all those things. So I find a lot of companies, by the way, that are not listed with business brokers or anything like that. I, I, I buy a couple from business brokers, but rarely do I have to use them. There's so many others out there. It's just about letting people know that you're in the business of buying companies. If you're in the business, all of a sudden, you know, it starts up a whole different conversation. You don't want to treat yourself as a salesperson. You know, if somebody comes in and says, oh, Mike, I want you to, you know, help me grow my sales and I'll make you this super affiliate and we'll pay you this extra commission. It's like, no, I am not a salesperson. Right. Now, you want me to grow your company? I get equity. You don't want to give me equity? That's fine. I'll refer you to somebody who will be a salesperson for you and good luck. Good luck with that. Right. You know, if you want me to treat this as my baby and really grow it, then this is how we've got to do it. So I must always be in control. And I would encourage people to just look around and start talking to people and look at deals. When you start thinking about the number of deals that are available, all of a sudden your perspective changes. So one, a little quote that I like to always say, um, and we can try to you know, use this for, for everybody as well, is that opportunities don't go away. They just go to somebody else. Right. So you right. Know, opportunities don't go away. They go to somebody else. So the opportunity is here. It's available for everybody that's listening in with us right now to start finding deals. You can find them online. You can find them in Craigslist. You can find them through referrals. You can find them just talking to people. I find I found one, uh, uh, what was it, last month by riding in first class on the airplane, talking to somebody, and the guy was like, well, yeah, well, I, I'd, be, I'd be kind of interested in that when you struck a deal and worked out an equity arranger. Incredible. You know what I mean? You never know where your deals are going to come from. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really just opening your mind and, and, uh, and learning. Yes, you know, and letting like, other people know that you do it. Right. Don't keep it a secret. <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, I'll have in the show notes uh, the the website flippingbusinesses.com. And you know, I, I know that that's probably your going to be your, your tip of the uh, of the week. But we, and and I told you a little bit beforehand, we always do a tip of the week. So, do you have anything else you want to you want to share as a resource, a website, or a tip besides flippingbusinesses.com? Um, well, you know, if they go to that site, um, they could also get – well, actually, you know, if they go to Amazon, okay. they can get a copy of my book, which is called How to Buy Business Using Its Own Cash. How to Buy Businesses Using Its Own Cash Uh huh. on Amazon. On Amazon. Now, they, what they need, need to understand, though, is that's just a book, right? It's not going to teach them everything about buying and flipping a business, but boy, you know what? It'll, it'll answer a whole lot of questions, but uh, it's not an end-all to be-all. That's what the live event is for. Right. You know, you figure a book that I can read in an hour versus, you know, at least 16 to 20 hours worth of live training. Which one would you rather have? Right, right. And in, in something like this, when the dollars are so big and the opportunity is so big, you don't want to, you don't want to scrimp. You no, don't, I mean? you know, don't pretend you're a startup. 
pretend you're a big corporation, you come in and you're going to play a big game. You know, so you act the part, you dress the part, you don't walk around in flip flops, you're not doing the internet marketing guy, you know, because nobody takes you seriously when you go into a million dollar business. Right. Because if, if you tried to do that, and I tried to do that, I walked in with flip flops and shorts and a t shirt, say, hey, yeah, I want you to give me, you know, equity in your company, they're going to laugh me out the door. Yeah. Right. So part of it is knowing what to do, what to say, how to go about it. And you just act the part. You act as if. Even if you don't know all the answers, Mark, it's okay. But if you act as if you do or you act as if you have access to those answers, everything else will be fine. This is fantastic. I know you're busy, Mike. I can't thank you enough and uh, for taking time out of your very, very busy schedule to uh, – to share with my listeners, uh, flippingbusinesses.com and the incredible opportunity that you're offering. So uh, I want to thank you again, and uh, I hope we can we can do another podcast because this is such a uh, a wide ranging uh, industry. I'm, I'm sure we can find more to talk about and, and more yeah. details. I would be happy to do that. It was a pleasure being on the call with you. Hopefully. Uh... You get some good comments for, from everybody that's listening, um, and, and they should. You know, if, if they they're listening, you know, write some comments, give you some feedback, tell you that you like this kind of stuff, and you know, we'll do some more. We'll go into more detail or talk about different topics or other things that I'm doing. However, I can help you. I'm uh, I'm available here to help you. So and, thanks for having me on the call. Yeah, no problem. And hopefully, I'll have a follow up because I'll probably be in Vegas, and then I'll tell everybody, hey, I was at the live event with Mike, and this is what I learned. So, um, fantastic. But uh, this is, uh, you know, I just want to thank you again. But I'm, I'm going to sign off. And uh, this is Mark Podolsky. If you want to learn more about me, go to www.thelandgeek.com. And to learn more about Mike Warren and what he is doing, of course, go to www.flippingbusinesses.com. I will have all this information uh, in the show notes. And, uh, this is Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, saying make it an extraordinary day. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.